everyone, and welcome back to Royal Fashion News. My name is Brittany, and today we are gonna be talking about the eight best tiara moments of this year. Yes, 2022 is the return of tiaras in a grander scale. We saw a couple of tiara events back in 2021, but really for like the all of 2020, we really didn't have any really big tiara events, except for I would say maybe the New Year's Day celebration that they have in Denmark. Other than that, we have been sans tiaras for far too long. And there were some instances of masks and tiaras. Isn't that fun? So, I am so excited to talk about, I think, the eight best moments of this year. And I'm going to have to say, just for number eight, I'm just going to say generally the return of state visits. Yes, yeah, so across Europe, many royal families either hosted state visits or went on a state tour themselves. And so it was a great time to see the tiaras get busted out again. Obviously, it depends on the level of the state visit if a tiara is debuted at that event. But we saw a couple of these with Queen Maxima. She went on a state visit to Greece where she wore a tiara. She went on a state visit to Sweden, which we'll also get into. And then in addition, she hosted a state visit there in the Netherlands with Italy. So it was great to see her bust out a couple of tiaras there. There was also a diplomatic reception event, which I really love her orange and red mixture that I honestly can say is probably one of my favorite tiara looks of this year. I thought she looked fab there. We also have Queen Matilda of the Belgians. She went to Lithuania. There was a diplomatic reception of sorts in Norway where we saw Crown Princess Met Mart wear a tiara again. So it was just a great time to see more tiaras come out because it just feels like it's been so long. So I'm hoping we see more and more of these in the coming year. We obviously saw the return of that in the UK in November. And I think we'll see more. Usually there's two state visits per year in the UK. So we should see a couple next year, perhaps when Catherine and William go on tour, they may actually start, Catherine may actually start wearing a tiara on the tour. That, that could be a change. Diana did that a bit when she married into the royal family. So I think that's definitely a strong, strong possibility. Okay, so next number seven, I'll have to say is the Netherlands state visit to Sweden. Obviously, the European royal families, they are very, very close. So anytime there's an opportunity for royals to visit each other, I feel like those tours are always better and heightened in a lot of ways because most of them have known each other for most of their lives. So this tour we saw Queen Maxima. She once again brought out the Stuart tiara this time in another setting. So we now have officially have four different settings that she's utilized the Stuart for. The full Stuart with the Stuart diamond which is a 40 karat light blue diamond that she debuted in the UK. But other than that we've had various lower settings that she's used. So she's been very effective at taking pieces off and mixing them up so that you really get a different look every time which I think is super fabulous. And she has a great head for the Stuart, she just, I think, has no problem with the weight or anything because it's a very heavy tiara. Her mother-in-law never wore it, so it's great to see her bust that out. Queen Sylvia also repaid the favor, and she busted out the Brazenga tiara, which is the largest one within the Swedish collection. It's all diamonds. It's very, very heavy. It has a actually Brazilian origin, so she wore that, and it's quite rare for her to wear that anymore because it is very, very heavy. So it was great to see her come out with that. Crown Princess Victoria also look completely on point in the amethyst tiara and princess sophia once again wore her wedding tiara so i thought that was a really great visit and again great to see the families there's a close relationship between victoria and king wilhelm alexander so victoria the crown princess of sweden and king wilhelm alexander of the netherlands so again it's great to see these relationships and these bonds continue to grow because i feel like sometimes we we forget that at the end of the day most of these royals they have a connection somewhere in their bloodline and so they are in fact quite close. For number six, we have Princess Catherine here, once again, wearing the Queen Mary's Lover's Knot tiara at the state visit of South Africa. And I have to give special shout out to this one because this, I think, is Kate's best tiara look. So I feel like Catherine really struggled with the glamour of tiaras. I just feel like that's not as comfortable for her. She's more of a down home. She likes to be, I think, in jeans and she likes to be in nature and those sorts of things. So I think some of these grander events, I think were a bit more difficult for her to get used to. I really think the white gown that she wore from Jenny Packham with the long caped sleeves and everything. Oh my gosh, that was 
utter perfection. Everything worked together so, so well. It just felt so grand and so, and such a great debut look for the Princess of Wales. It was just so exciting to see Catherine, I feel like, really come into her own. It's taken her a while. She, it did take her a bit, I feel like, to get more comfortable in this area, but I feel like this look especially was just absolute perfection. And I really liked that she did come out with the Lotus tiara again. I'm hoping we see her in more this next year because now as the Princess of Wales and as Camilla as Queen, there may be a change in how the tiaras are utilized one of the things I love about the Swedes is that they share their tiaras very, very well with a couple reserved for the queen and one at least generally reserved for the crown princess although others have worn it from time to time. It's generally just one for the crown princess. And so I just really am hoping that Catherine gets to experiment a bit more and gets access to more of the collection that her and Camilla perhaps share more because I feel like that is just one of the fun things about tiaras is to see more of them. And so speaking of Camilla, number five, we have this year is Camilla debuting this, the Belgian Sapphire Tiara. So this was a bit of a surprise at the South African state visit. I posited it as one of the tiaras that her or Catherine could wear. I actually gave it to Catherine because I thought it had a little bit of a lower stature, which could have worked for somebody as a crown princess. It didn't scream uh, what we call a big gun tiaras, which are basically ones reserved for the queen because they're just so grand. Uh, I didn't feel like this one fit that mold, but it did make sense because I feel like that one is not as closely associated with the queen as some of the other tiaras in the British collection. So I thought it was a great look for Camilla. I think she actually looks fantastic in blue. I was not a fan of her dress. I felt like it could have been fitted better. But in terms of the tiara, the tiara was on point. The tiara really worked. So I thought it was just really, really a gorgeous, gorgeous look there for her. And then number four, we have Queen Marguerite's Golden Jubilee, which was pretty much upstaged entirely by Queen Elizabeth's desk because it literally happened a couple days afterwards. And so I, it was lovely that we did get a tiara event from the queen. They pushed back some of the celebrations because of COVID and then the queen's death. And so Queen Marguerite, I do feel like her golden jubilee was completely overshadowed, but I did think she looked absolutely fantastic. She wore pearl pear-shaped tiara, which is, it's there's a fancy word for, for it and I will probably mispronounce it, so I won't try. Portier, I think maybe is the way to pronounce it. Queen Marguerite looked fantastic there. She also had a bigger concert gala event and there she wore her floral the Danish floral agra tiara. And so I feel like that again, looked really, really gorgeous on her. It's kind of a unique tiara because it actually curves around the head. It would be interesting to see what Crown Princess Mary does with it when she becomes queen, if she resets it more in a traditional tiara shape and how she experiments with it in generally, because I feel like Crown Princess Mary, she has experimented quite a bit with the ruby tiara that she received as a crown princess. And it is it has a strong history and in Denmark, so that's, that's a Danish ruby tiara. And so speaking of Crown Princess Mary, we'll move on to number three because Crown Princess Mary celebrated her 50th birthday. And now, while that might not be quite as impressive as a golden jubilee, although it is ironic that Crown Princess Mary was born the same year Marguerite became queen, but I really did think Crown Princess Mary really rocked her 50th birthday look. I just really, really loved her ruby tiara and this light blue dress with the sparkles. I felt like even though it was the rubies are subtle in her tiara. They really matched with the gown in a unique way. And I just thought that was super, super flattering on her. And I just really, really loved it. And I think that's what's fun too about big birthdays is usually we get very formal portraits. I was kind of hoping for Catherine and William, we'd get more formal portraits of them for their 40th birthday. So hopefully, Hopefully, fingers crossed, maybe in 10 years, guys, Catherine will have a very formal portrait with a tiara for her 50th birthday, perhaps. I think that would be pretty cool. So it was just, again, really great to see Crown Princess Mary in her 50th birthday look. Okay, guys, so number two is obvious. It should be anyways, if you are a royal watcher. Number two is Return of the Nobles. So every year the Nobel Prize ceremony in Sweden is attended by all the major royals and they bust out their best looks, I feel like, of the year. It's a very, very grand event and I feel like they go all out in a way they don't even do with state visits. I feel like especially Crown Princess Victoria and everything, her looks are always 
that extra bit of grand. And this is an event we haven't had in the last couple of years because of COVID. So it was wonderful to see Victoria and the Queen and Princess Sophia once again bust out their tiaras for this event. Princess Sophia debuted a couple of new blue topaz tops for her tiaras. So she's has a rather interesting situation in that she has this tiara and she can constantly switch out the top jewels. It started out with emeralds and then became pearls and then she also has turquoise and now she also has blue topaz so she has quite a few so I feel like she'll probably have every color of the rainbow at some point point. and then we had crown princess Victoria and she wore the six button tiara which is one they don't necessarily always wear and I know it's one that some people are just not a super big fan of but it is quite pretty I think it's kind of unique and I feel like it is rather grand for being kind of as wonky as it is because you feel like it's it's a bunch of things amalgamated together and that's a bit similar to Sophie Reese's wedding tiara which was taken from an old piece of Queen Victoria's jewelry and refashioned into something that she can wear but it just doesn't necessarily look super nice I guess you could say uh, so that's a bit of an interesting piece that she has and we also have Queen Sylvia she put on the amethyst tiara which I think is a wonderful piece it's a unique piece in Sweden because it's a fur it's a full circlet which is unique because not all the families have that and it is harder to wear in fashion Queen Sylvia looks quite great in it and it is again light and so I guess apparently the weight of some of their bigger tiaras are really starting to weigh on her no pun intended and so she's going with something that's perhaps a bit a bit lighter in some ways and then again we also have the next day they have a reception princess sophia once again had her wedding tiara on and then we had crown princess victoria in the laurel tiara so this is one she actually inherited from her great aunt and so it's one she wears with a lot of pride they were quite close with their great aunt Princess Lillian, who waited um, numerous years to marry the, her husband, Prince Bertel. Crown Princess Victoria and the, just the whole family was quite close with Princess Lillian. And so she attended several events of the Swedish court over the years. And when she died, she left that tiara to Crown Princess Victoria. And she wears it on numerous occasions. And it actually is one that personally belongs to Crown Princess Victoria. Not all of them are like that. Again, because of inheritance tax issues, it's best not to leave tiaras directly to family members because they would have to pay taxes on it unless it stays with the main line of the family. That's what usually happens. And then Queen Sylvia for the next day of the Nobel, she wore the nine prong tiara. So that's one of the grander ones within the Swedish collection. Again, it's one that's only worn by the queen. Okay, guys, so for number one, some of you are probably wondering what it is. We've already covered Kate. We've already covered the Nobels. What else are we going to cover in this video? What other big TR event did we have? Well, guys, we had three future queens wear a tiara for the first time at the same event. So it was Princess Ingrid Alexandra's 18th birthday. And so for that appearance, she was given a tiara that she wore for the first time. It had pearls, it had diamonds, and it's quite light. And it's one that belonged to an extended line of the family and then had rejoined the main line. So it was her first time wearing a tiara at her very, very grand birthday celebration. I don't know what you did when you turned 18, but that was certainly not what I did is had all my closest friends wear their tiaras and come to an event and wear fancy jewelry and fancy gowns. And there's apparently also a Norwegian birthday dance, which I think is absolutely hysterical and I love it. We also had Princess Elizabeth of the Belgian. So she actually turned 18, I think just as the pandemic was starting. And so she didn't get a chance to have a big birthday dinner. And so she debuted her tiara for the first time. And it's one the family purchased for her. The Belgians don't have a ton of tiaras. So there, it was one they were able to buy for her, which I think is really great. And so she was able to wear it for the first time as well. And then we also have Princess Katharina Amalia of the Netherlands, who has also turned 18 within the last year or so. And she debuted the Dutch star tiara. So I think that's Really cool that she chose her mother's that she wore and apparently her mother gave her a couple of different options and she did decide to go 
the tiara her mother wore on her wedding day, which I think is just a really cool legacy thing to do. And then we also, for good to mention, there's a picture of the three of them, the ladies in their tiaras for the first time. And then we also have little Princess Estelle, who's around 10, and she was wearing a bejeweled headband, but it wasn't real jewels. It wasn't real jewels quite yet, but she got to sit there with other future queens. And then we have a future little Grand Duke. So little Prince Charles was sitting on his chair, which was so adorable that they, his parents brought him. His parents are just absolutely in love with their, their child. And so they brought him in. And I think it was just great to see them have this moment, especially with him sitting in the chair. It's just so, so adorable. But I just think it's fantastic when you can see uh, a couple of ladies in their tiaras for the first time. And I thought it was just fun for them as young ladies who are all going to be one day queens to actually have this celebration together. I think it's a lot of fun. And we also got to see a lot of other women in their tiaras. Queen Maxima wore once again the Stuart because Maxima loves her bling and that's why we love Maxima is she loves the bling and she always brings the bling by the way. And then Crown Princess Victoria also wore again her laurel wreath tiara. Crown Princess met Mard of Norway, so Ingrid Alexandra's mother wore her daisy tiara that she received when she married the Crown Prince. Her grandmother, Queen Sonia, wore her emerald tiara. We also have Queen Matilda of the Belgians, and she wore the Wolfers tiara. So it was just Again, it's such a fun event to see so many queens and future queens come together. We also had Crown Princess Mary. She wore her Midnight Tiara, which is a really unique tiara. It's made out of moonstone, so it just has a very unique look to it. And I thought she looked really, really great. And then we had Princess Stephanie there as well. And we also had the Crown Prince and Princess of Greece and their daughter, the Princess of Greece. So it was just a great time to see all these royals once again come together for such a big birthday celebration. Next year we have in Sweden, it'll be the King's Golden Jubilee. So I think we'll have a really, really grand event, which will be fantastic. I plan on going and I plan on trying to see if I can get press credentials for that. Absolutely, because I would love to see some of these tiaras in person up close, especially Sweden. They have such a grand collection, I think, and such a historic collection. So it'd be wonderful to see all that together. And so it was just so fun to have this event. And I'm so excited that we get a couple of new ladies wearing tiaras and next year we may have Princess Leonor of Spain. She will turn 18 on October 31st and so she may start wearing tiaras too so we'll have even more tiaras and ladies in tiaras to talk about which is always so so much fun and so guys thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your favorite tiara moment of this year was. I look forward to seeing you again really really soon. Bye! Bye!